because it's not all about the reds and the greens. It's all about the data represented by each candle and what one candle is telling you in relationship to the other candle. Now remember, when we draw a candlestick on a chart, whether we're looking at a 15 minute chart or a one day chart or a one month chart, it's still the same. We put a line across at the open price, we put a line across to close in that time frame that you selected, we put a dot at the highest it made and a dot at the lowest price it traded, and then we connect what's called the wicks to the body. And now, if we step down from the open to the close, this would be called a bearish candle, or we'd fill it in with red or whatever you're using for your bearish color. In the opposite direction, if you stepped up from the open to the close, that would be a bearish candle, and you would fill that in, that would be a bullish candle, and you would fill that in with the bullish color you had selected. In most cases, it's reds and greens or blacks and whites. Those are the two most popular color combinations, but you can use whatever is comfortable for you. We also looked at interpreting last week or understood last week, and you need to understand is, is what the size and the shape of the individual candle tells you. And there are six variations of this story. And if you remember or you think about it, it's like explaining a game of football. Okay. It tells you which team dominated or controlled the ball for most of the game. If you started, if your candle was a bullish candle and formed like this, and you had your open here and your close here, that's telling you the bulls dominated the trading segment or controlled the ball for the most of the game. In this case, we had even size wicks. So that means each side was able to pull the price a little bit in each direction, but not that far. So the bulls had control. There's the exact opposite, and that is the bearish candle. But it's a standard candle where the wicks are even and we have a nice solid body, and that's telling you the, bull, the bears were in control. Then you have the small candle, where the open and the close were relatively the same. Doesn't matter whether it was a black or red candle, what it's telling you is there's indecisiveness in the marketplace. We go on to candlestick four, where you have a small body, which means the open and the close were fairly close to the same, and you have a long wick. Okay. Doesn't matter again what color it ended up, it tells you that the bears came out like a bat out of hell pushed the price down, but we're not able to hold it, and the bulls were able to take back possession and pull the price back up. Just the opposite, when you have a strong up wick or a long wick, and that tells you the bulls were in dominance but couldn't hold on to it, and the bears were able to retrace their precision. Here again, we have a small body. We have equal size wicks in either direction but long wicks. Again, it tells us indecisiveness, but both teams were able to pull back and forth evenly, but at the end, neither one had an advantage. And this explains the sentiment in the marketplace. This is one of the first ways that we use candlesticks. It explains the battle between the bears and the bulls so you can understand who is in control. Now that you have the basic idea of what candlesticks indicate with their bodies and wicks, let's go look at some of other parts of candlesticks. We've got to look at positions. We've got to look at patterns. There's all kinds of candlesticks that we build on our basic knowledge. So in last week's class, we learned, we learned how to build a candlestick on a chart. We understand how to understand and read the candlestick like we just looked at. We understood the explanation of the size and the shapes. We discussed what a doji, what a harami is, what the tops and the bottoms were, the battle of the bulls and the bears and hammers and hanging men. Okay. These are basics you need to understand about candlesticks because there's all kinds of things. There's all kinds of positions. We have evening stars. We have morning stars. Okay. And all of this starts to tell you a story about price. But those were all involving the placement of single candlesticks. 
But now it's time to learn about multi-candlestick patterns. And these were very important. And as I told you, the amount of reds and greens are virtually unimportant to the candlesticks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to interrupt for one second. Okay. Yes, you have the ability to type in questions, but to keep typing in personalized questions that you think I'm going to stop the class to give you a personal answer is a fallacy. The class is very well planned. We have a very rich lot to cover, and if you have any questions at the end of the class, we will be glad to leave it. Okay. I don't have control of the, of the class. I don't have the video to send you. I am a paid teacher. Okay. Contact investing.com and see if they will supply it to you. I do not have any control of it, so don't send me your email address and give me instructions to send it to you. Okay. If you want to send me 50 bucks, I'll be glad to locate it for you. But otherwise, I mean, I've got 90 people in here writing the same thing. I can't help you. I'm just here to teach you. Okay. So thank you very much. Now, we're going on to the shapes and the patterns. Now, last week we talked about what some people call lonesome cowboys or standalone candles. This is one candlestick. Okay. Now, we talked about it last week. We have the Marabuzu, which is a very critical candlestick. It's a candlestick that has no wicks. It means that the open and the high and the close and the low were exactly the same. When it's a red candlestick, it tells you the bears were in complete domination. They dominated that whole segment, and the segment closed with them continuing to push down. <clears throat> a bullish marabuzu is exactly the opposite. It starts out and the bulls control the entire segment so you never got a down wick and they closed at the same high that they reached. So they were climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing and the only reason it closed out is because it, it ended the time segment. So this is a candle with no wicks and a long body. And it's a very important candle to be able to see. We also had spinning tops and dojis. Dojis are a very common candle. Dojis look like crosses. There's virtually no body to a doji. What a doji tells you is complete market indecisiveness. The bears and the bulls had no control of the market. It doesn't matter how long the wicks are. If the open and the close were virtually the same, that's like within one pip or exactly the same, Nobody controlled the marketplace. And we talked about these last week, and they are the bare basics. A single candlestick gives you some information, but at the same time, it doesn't tell you to trade. Okay. Now, we do need to get information all the time, but candlesticks are always about the candlestick next to the current candle and what it's telling you or affirming you. Now, today we're going to look at the doubles and the triples, okay? because these become critically important. So we have bullish engulfing candles, bearish engulfing candles. They don't occur often, but when they do occur, they're very important. Then we have bullish tweezers and bearish tweezers. These are funny sounding ones, but they look just like tweezers. And when they occur, they are very important. They are telling you something very specific about the market. And then we go on to the triples or the trios, and we have morning star, evening star, three white shoulders, three black crows, three inside up, and three inside out. Now, the fact is there's all kinds of weird names. There's all kinds of Asian names for a lot of this stuff. You don't have to know the names. You don't have to memorize what they're called. You have to recognize the pattern and understand what it's trying to tell you when you see it. So there are 16 very important shapes, and you should see these and notice these all the time. Okay, And we're going to start going through these one by one. Okay, Now, each one of these occurs in a group of candles. Again, you can never look at a candlestick individually. You have to look at them in conjunction to one another. Now, if you attended last week's class, I gave you these handouts. Uh, they're not in here. They will be in next week's. If you attend next week's class, the wrap of the class will give you copies of everything that we had for the class. 
But these are the important patterns you need to look for and what they tell you. So it's a cheat sheet. Okay. Then we also come across what we call blending candles. This is two candles that are individual candle patterns, but together also tell you a story. So let's start, though, with the first and important two-candle pattern. And this is called the engulfing. Engulfing candles are a pair of candles that indicate an impending market reversal, which may be bullish or bearish, depending on which one it is, a bullish or bearish engulfing. If the pattern appears at the end of a downtrend, it would comprise of a small reddish body followed by a long green body candle, which fully engulfs the body of the previous candle. Okay, now what we mean by this, if you, if you were with us last week, we talked about a harami. A harami in Japanese means pregnant because the body of the next candle is fully inside the body of the previous candle. Now, some traders want to pull this interpretation farther. I firmly believe that the wicks and the body must be contained within the body of the previous candle for harami. But with a bullish engulfing, what happens is the first candle develops on the chart. You then get a second candlestick pattern. And when that second candlestick pattern is in the opposite color, and it's at the end of the downtrend, and the body of the previous candle is fully inside the body of the current candle, we have what's called a bullish engulfing candle. So in other words, this candle here, which was bullish, ate up. Just imagine, it ate up the bears from the previous session, and it kept them contained within. Now, what happened in this case, we're also going to show you, this happens to be a beautiful marabuzo. See this long candlestick? No wicks. That's a marabuzo. Okay. Now, it happens to be located right next to our bullish engulfing candle, or it's a bullish engulfing it is the bullish engulfing candle next to it. This is telling you that that downtrend is over, not that it's easing back, not that it's, it's telling you that it's over. The bulls are taking control of the market, and we're going to begin an uptrend. Now, it means we could have a period of consolidation. Now, there are fine interpretations because the consolidation should not come below the 50% of the engulfing candle and then it moves sideways, and then it started a firm, hard uptrend. Okay. We see this the exact opposite. It doesn't have to be a harami. We see it here. We have the bullish candle right here. We're in an uptrend. We have the bullish candle up here, just through a regular uptrend. But then the next candlestick fully engulfs the previous candlestick in the opposite color. And that's telling you the, bull, the bears ate up the bulls. They engulfed it and trampled them and pulled it down. In this case, they went into a short horizontal um, consolidation and then started a downtrend. Okay. They signal to you that something is about to happen. Now, again, it's very important where these appear. So if this appears in a downtrend, then it is a very precise interpretation. If it appears in the middle of a horizontal trend or, or a consolidation, or it can appear in the middle of an uptrend. It's how and what it appears. Now, it's important to be able to recognize these with the with what's going on. It's not a, the interpretation is pure, but you have to look at where it is in relationship to everything. So, in other words, if I'm telling you to shift gears in your car and you're on a highway going 60, and I tell you to shift from third to fourth, okay, well, if you're in a highway going 60, but if you were in a highway going 80 and the traffic was slowing down, I wouldn't be telling you to upshift. I'd be telling you to downshift, but I'd still be making a movement between three and four. So you always have to look at where the candlestick pattern is developed in relationship to the movement on the charts. It is critically important because otherwise, you will be lulled in 
and make false assumptions. Okay, so this is the bullish and the bearish engulfing. It is a it doesn't happen that often. So the more complicated the pattern is and the least they occur, the more relevant they are to your decision making. Now we have bullish and bearish tweezers. These do not happen at all very, very much. Now, a bullish or bearish tweezers look just like a pair of tweezers. Okay. You have two candles with virtually the same body. Now, what you have are two lows that were much lower. So in other words, the bulls and the bears did not dominate the session, but the bears had a strong push or a small strong rally in the middle of the session, but didn't hold on to much of it. It's important on the tails. These are called the tails or the wicks. This is where we're looking for our interpretation. Now, these don't happen often, but they look just like they said. So if you can't remember the name, now it has to be bullish tweezers or bearish tweezers. There's, they're kind of a funny name, so you kind of remember them. They're not complicated. But what you're looking for is this precise pattern. And what else are you looking for? You're looking for it at the bottom of a trend. You don't know it's the bottom. You see price trending down and needs to develop. This is signaling to you that this is most likely the bottom and going to start retracing back to an uptrend. And it's important to look at the colors of the bearish and the bullish candles. The wicks must be the same, but we see here that the bears controlled the session but could not just hold on to it. The next one, the bears were able to take a last thrust, but the bulls were able to pull it back and close higher. So this is telling you the bears were burning out and finally gave up. Okay, And this is explaining the momentum. But again, you always have to look at where it occurs and also, never take a single, double, or triple candlestick pattern without looking at the next candle. The next candle is a confirmation candle. It's not an interpretation. You need to see whether that next candle supports the pattern and the, your reading. Because there's no rules. There, there's, there are only guidelines. And if you don't if you, again, if you try to follow them blindly and try to make a trade based on this, you will get hurt. But if you always look at the next candle, let the next candle unfold and develop, and it, if it confirms that candlestick pair or that candlestick pattern, then you know exactly what is going on in the market. Now it's fully been explained to you. It's like jumping to the last paragraph, last last chapter of a book and missing the whole thing in between. If you let the next one unfold and unfold, you're going to have the whole story so that you can find out what the final decision was. And it's very important in candlesticks to look at the next candle after it. Okay, now bullish bearish tweezers are again the upside down. During an uptrend, a, a tweezer pattern would have a comparable short red candle followed by a green candle of the same short body size, and both candles will have long upper wicks or shadows of equal size. The bottom shadows will either be missing or they will be very, very, very short. The pattern is exactly opposite of the bullish tweezer pattern. The psychological reading of the pattern also becomes opposite to the bullish tweezers. The bearish tweezers signal a short selling opportunity. Now, from here we go to two very unique patterns, the morning star and the evening star. And again, these are a double candlestick pattern, and they are very significant. So remember, candlestick patterns appear in singles, pairs, or trios. We just looked at Lonesome Cowboys, or that's what we actually looked at last week, and we're going to look at the trios of the tangos next. But here's a group of three candlestick patterns that seem to have been inspired by the three musketeers. Okay, And that's why some, 
I don't even know where I got this from, but somebody nicknamed them, and it's been popular in the markets, the Three Musketeers. I just call them trios. Okay. Now, next we come to our first triples. So remember, in doubles we had what? We had bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, and we had bullish tweezers and bearish tweezers. Now, in the trios, and trios happen less and less. When they occur, they are like hitting you on the head and telling you to do something. Okay. So the morning star, shown in the, this chart here, comprises of a long red candle that follows from the previous downtrend, okay. followed by a small body candle which open gaps down from the previous candle. Okay. Now, what does open gap mean? If you remember last week, we talked about star candles. Star candles mean that the price okay, gaps away from the previous price. So it makes the candle look like it's a star in the heavens or a shooting or a falling star. It looks like it's sitting out there by itself. So if you notice here, this little candle here looks like it's a star, okay, a falling star in this case. Because this is the morning star, or the uh, and they, so morning star, the star after the night, and before the daybreak. So what we have here is the night, the single star, and the daybreak. Okay, is how they just try to describe it. It's simply a star, a candle with a very very small body that gaps away from the previous to make it look like it's sitting in the heavens alone. And we also have the morning star and the evening star, and they're exactly the opposite. Okay. What happened here? Bear selling continues intensifying the downtrend, as we see in the long red candle on the left-hand side. Though everyone expects more blood on the streets, the next session has a surprise in store. So we were in the middle of a downtrend. We got a very, very strong bearish candle. So what would we have normally expected? We would have expected the bears to come in and keep pushing price down. But instead, we got this small body candle signifying that the bulls and the bears were quite equally matched over there, and there was some indecisiveness. Now, this candle is saying the markets aren't can't decide. The next candle in the three patterns is telling us who ended up deciding, because a lot of times it's – the bears just got burned out. See, we had this very long candle first. That could just tell us the bears got bought out. There were, you know, the bears bought and bought and bought and bought, or so, I'm sorry, sold and sold and sold and sold and sold all the way through that session, and they were just tired out. So they took a second to breather, or all the initial bears were out of the session and there was nobody else coming back. So we got this gap. We got this little surprise bearish star. We would have expected in the third pattern for somebody to declare they're in control. When we have a morning star pattern, the third candle, if it is it's supposed to be a bullish candle, this is telling you that the bulls have now recovered the market, the bears are pushed out, and the bulls are now going to dominate, and we're going to reverse into an uptrend. But it must appear... In this fashion, it must tell this exact story that we had here. Okay. Now, as we go on to trading from it, there are we go on to more precise calculations of how big the candle will be from one to the next, what percentage it should take. What it, we could expect to see what we had here is we then started a uptrend, but then the bears came back a little bit in the next session, but dominated, but they weren't able to take back more fifty percent of the previous move means the next session here we had a doji and it just was a re, it was a regrouping session and then the bears started the bulls started their march so you need to be able to tell these stories when you see the candles now hold on let me get my marker off here okay. now to summarize the morning star pattern consists of the following. The first candle, a long red candle during an ongoing downtrend. So remember, if the markets are trend are, are range trading 
or consolidating, these patterns don't have an interpretation. These patterns are only valid during uptrends and downtrends. So the first candle is a long red candle during an ongoing downtrend. This candle represents strong bearish sentiment. The second candle, a very short body candle, which can be either red or green with long wicks, this candle represents sudden, a sudden break in the bearish trend with indecisiveness. And then the third candle, a green candle which is more than half in length of the first candle, and this candle represents a comparatively strong change in the sentiment towards the upside. Now, the middle candle with the short body and the long wicks looks like a star. That's in somebody's interpretation that named this you know, hundreds of years ago. And this is what we've kept it. I don't see it as a star, I just see it as an indecisive candle, but this is what they call a star. The star appears towards the end of the downtrend, symbolized as night. And before the first green candle of the possible uptrend, which is symbolized by the morning. Hence, the name of the pattern is morning star. Please also note that during old days, when the charts used to be in black and white, the downtrend candles used to be black in color, and the uptrend used to be white. So without the colors in there, it looked more like a star. Today looks a lot less. When I started pat charting a zillion years ago, we had to do it all by hand, and we were doing it on graph paper. Okay, and so it looked a little bit more about what the names came from. Because remember, these names were developed. The you know candlesticks were developed in the 17th century. You know, they they came to the states in the 18th, and they were used a little bit by traders. But you know, with retail trading and online trading and computerized charts, they've become a lot more popular. Now we have the exact opposite. We have the evening star pattern. It is the reverse of the morning star. Okay. You know, for each uptrend, there's a downtrend. And for each one, there is another interpretation in either direction. So the evening star pattern is shown on this chart, and it, it's quite the reverse. It comprises of a long green candle, a small red candle, which is the star, and then a red candle after that that shows you the bull, the bears have taken domination. And it looks like an evening star. Okay. The opposite, the market psychology is equally interesting. We are in the middle of a rally of prices with bulls firmly in the saddle. A buying thrust creates the first power green candle. The next session enthusiastically opens with an upside gap. Okay. But in the come down, the bull, for the bulls, the bears manage to thwart the rise, and there's no big movement. Sensing blood, bears maul the bulls the next session and creating a third long level candle. It means that the bears, the bulls were dominating as the uptrend. They lost some momentum. And the bulls were able to take control. The bears just, the bulls exhausted themselves. So to summarize the evening star, the first candle is a long green candle during an upgoing, ongoing uptrend. The second candle, a very short body candle, which can either be green or red with long wicks. This candle represents sudden break in the bullish trend with indecisiveness. The third candle, a red candle which is more than half in length of the first green candle of the pattern. This candle represents a comparatively strong change in investment sentiment. Why the name Evening Star? Well, we discussed it. It's the evening or the morning star, and it's an interpretation of how you see these. Now we go on to the last and the most unique of the three star pattern. And this is called three white soldiers and three black crows. Okay. They are very rare. Okay. When they appear, they are very important. So a three white soldier pattern emerges during a downtrend and the three, three black crows patterns emerge during an uptrend. And what are they? We have a downtrend here on the left hand side and all of a sudden we get three solid green candles. Okay. But there's some definition on the candles, but overall each candle gaps up and continues rising so that the previous candle is above 
the body of the last candle. Okay. This is telling you that something occurred that the bulls just wiped out the market. I mean, absolutely, totally wiped it out. The bears went running for cover, and a downtrend, an uptrend, the downtrend is over, and we're moving directly into an uptrend. These don't appear often, but when they do, especially in a trend, they will appear in the middle of an uptrend, and you'll get three candles. That's just supportive of the uptrend. It's when you have a downtrend and they appear, it's telling you that trend is over and it's going to turn. There's not even going to be a period of consolidation. It is going to go right into an uptrend. Okay. The exact opposite is true in a with three black crows. The market is moving up, and all of a sudden the bears took control of the market. We had three red candles, one after another, and all three candles gapped from the open to the close. We had three solid bodies, and it means the bulls completely lost control of the markets, and the bears moved over. So we're looking at moving to a downtrend. Okay. So when these appear in an uptrend or downtrend, it's the only time. Three, three, white, crow, three white soldiers appears in a, a downtrend. Three black crows appears in an uptrend. It must be not in a sideways movement. If it appears in the middle of an uptrend, it doesn't tell you something. If it appears in the middle of a downtrend, it doesn't tell you something. So you need three black crows appear in an, up, the, in an uptrend. When you see that and the prices are moving up, it's telling you reversal. Three white crows in a downtrend is telling you the markets are about to reverse and move in the opposite direction. So. It's important to have these only in the trends. Okay. And you need to see these in relationship to the current trend pattern. Okay. Here we go to another three of very unique patterns. And these are three inside up and three inside down. At least the names aren't as crazy as the other names. Okay. They kind of make sense. But the patterns are quite complex. Three inside up, as shown in the chart here, appears during a downtrend. So you're only looking for the inside up in a downtrend. You're looking for the upside, the outside down in a downtrend. So let's only concentrate, I'm sorry, in an uptrend. So let's, let's only concentrate right now on a three inside up pattern, which only has validity when it appears in a downtrend. These are up here, the first candle is a tall red one, as you see in the middle of my circle, followed by a small green one, okay. which is nestled within the range of the previous body. So look at the candle, the first green candle next to the red candle, and it's nestled or engulfed, shall we say? Is that a word? It's engulfed? Okay, so maybe if we only had two candles, we could even consider this a bearish or bullish engulfing candle. But we have the third pattern, and what do we have in the third pattern? We have a gap up and move straight up. So the last candle is a tall green one that pushes out above the close of the previous small green close. So what is that telling you? If we read the candles, we see in the first candle, the bulls, the bears had utter domination. We would have expected this to continue in a downtrend. All of a sudden, we get what could be considered a bullish engulfing candle or the beginnings of the three inside pattern. And it is followed by a third candle, which gaps up and is quite large. This is telling you that the downtrend is over, not that it's a continuation, not that it's a breakout, not that we're going consolidation. But the bulls have totally wiped out the bears. Now, again, next week we're going to talk about percentages. We'll talk about being able to look at this on a chart and see what percentage we expect it to recover by. Because this will also, these patterns and all of these and the size of the candles will help us determine stop loss and take profit points, entry and exit points. But before we can even think about deciding to invest money, we have to first learn to 
recognize these patterns and interpret the patterns. Because otherwise, you're going to be throwing your money out and wasting it. Okay. Now, the three inside down is exactly the same opposite. Same story, same opposite, upside down. It happens with an uptrend. So an uptrend, we get towards the top of an uptrend, we get an inside down pattern. It's telling you, okay, this trend is over and it's about to break down. Okay. Now, these triple candles okay, are very unique. They don't appear often. So again, single candles okay, happen a lot. Double candles like the Harami start often. Amara Bozu is a, happens often. It's what is it trying to tell you when you see it, and then what it, where it is stands in the stature. But the more you combine it with the second and third patterns, the less prevalent they are, the more important they happen. Okay. So it's very important. Dojis appear all the time. What is a doji telling you? Okay. There's indecisiveness in the market. Okay. That's what it's telling you. What do you do with it? So single candle patterns happen often. Doubles happen less. Triples happen even less. So a triple candle is very accurate. And they can be relied on tremendously. Now, I know you're all sitting there saying, Barry, this is a nightmare. I mean, we weren't even here last week for single candles. How do we find all this stuff? Well, next week I'm going to show you. Because now with all the new modern charts, the computerized charting services, and even here on investing.com, you just plug in what you're looking for, and it'll pop up a warning when it develops on the chart. So you don't even have to be looking to charts. Okay. You tell it you're looking for only high pattern recognition and what assets you're looking for, and it just signals you. There's other ones like on TradingView where you just click on you know, a, a script, and it'll show you every Harami on, on the charts you're looking at. So there's many ways that you can not waste your time searching for these all the time, that you're given alerts to them, because these are basically things that we can formulate. Okay. Now, when it appears, once somebody tells you, okay, we just had a three inside down pattern, no, nobody can tell you how to interpret it. They can tell you what the pattern means. It's you who have to go back and look at where it stands in the current movement, the current cycle, to try to determine what is going on. Okay. But we will have to move into action. Okay. And this week we're going to do a little bit more, and then next week we're going to only start looking at these on charts, finding them on charts, and figuring out how to use them to put stop losses, take profits, and make trading decisions. But now when you've gone through the various candlestick patterns, either you're ready to go to the trading battlefield with the newly acquired knowledge, or you want to stop, shout stop, stop it. I am just too confused with all these funny names and shapes. Can't remember any of these. Well, the fact is, you don't have to remember the names. Okay, remember this. You should be able to look at a candlestick chart and tell a story. Okay, If you can tell the story by the candles, and this is just not the red and green candle on the size, of, but you can tell the story of the wicks and the bodies. Like sometimes I make a story about a tug-of-war game over top of a river. Sometimes I talk about a relationship to football. Sometimes I talk, and I can tell a whole story. Okay, when you can tell the story, and you say, oh, well, you know what? The wife of the guy in the front at the, at, at, at the tug of war must have just called him for lunch because all the bulls just, all his side just went falling into the river. Okay. When you can tell the story, you don't need to remember the names of the pattern. You can make them up for yourself. Add names that you can remember. Or just be aware when they happen. Okay. Because when you see these happen or your story starts telling you this happen, oh, look at that. The bulls were in complete, you know, complete control. We were moving the ball straight down the field. We're looking for a first down, and we're on. You know, we're looking like we might have a touchdown in this game, and we're waiting for that first down. And you're sure that the quarterback's going to toss that ball and to keep pushing the team farther down towards the goal line. And all of a sudden, the rusher's rushing back, and he loses yardage. Well, you're still not sure who's going to control, but you say, "Uh oh, we're now second and ten instead of first and ten. Then, all of a sudden, the next game, those those rushers knocked, you know, chasing after the quarterback, sack him way back. Now you're third in 15 or third in 20. You know he's most likely going to bring the, the, go for a field goal, depending on where he is in the yardage. They've lost a touchdown. You can tell this story. Okay. 
you've got to be able to make up some story in your mind based on your own personal knowledge. You, you know, you may not know American football, you may know soccer, you may know tennis, you may, you know, whatever, however you want to tell it, that is very, very different. Okay, now. Each candle of a candlestick chart is a reflection of the market sentiment. It is not just the standard pattern, but with keen observation, you can master the art of trading by looking at charts, even without remembering the names. Now, some people just asked me a couple questions. Okay, one of these I've got to answer for you. Okay, it's hi Barry. I noticed the candlesticks in my broker's chart and other broker's charts are different. So which chart, in your opinion, is better to use? A candlestick is a candlestick is a candlestick. Okay, they do not change. Okay. Now, what changes is the size of your screen, the size of the chart you're looking at. The same candlestick pattern will appear whether you're looking at a 15-minute chart or one-hour chart. You're looking at a great big chart, you're looking at a small chart. Okay. All of these are the exact same patterns, same candles. Your broker may only offer a very small screen but it's still the same candles okay because you can't change the high the low the open and the close they could be you have to look at what time session you're looking at are you looking at a 15 minute candle or one hour now the patterns will still appear if you're looking at a one hour candle the same things that happen with three candles it's just encompassing one hour's worth of time your 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 charts are based on how and what you're trading and what your strategy is for trading okay now I don't know that I mean there's a billion there's a billion brokers out there. They all have different charts and even if you're trading on MT4, which is a standardized, you know, mega platform, depends on what your bro how your broker filled it all in and how much screen he's taking with other stuff and what his dynamics are, but the candlesticks are still the candlesticks. I have never used a broker's charts. Okay. Because I don't want my charting tied to a broker. So I use private paid-for charts because then, regardless of what you're doing with your broker, if you change brokers, you don't change lose all your settings and everything else. So right now, I'm using the pro candlesticks, the pro charts from TradingView, which are only I think $129 a year. But the other difference that you get is, as far as charts, and I'm deviating here because this, this was a, a valid question, is the other difference you get is very, very important. Available free charts have slower feeds. Doesn't mean anybody's rigging charts. The faster the feed is to your chart, the more, like a lot of charts you're getting free, will tell you there's a five minute lag in feeds because the different agencies that feed out the feeds, the feeds are very, 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 very expensive. Okay. The faster you get the feeds, the more, more sec, more times per second they're catching this stuff. Remember, there's a lot of, um, the weight on their, their servers, but it also costs them more money. So the free charts sometimes have a lag or they're giving you a slower feed. Same thing if you're looking at a paid for economics counter, you're looking at an economics counter that's free. It's how fast the, the data is being pushed out to the provider and how often they're, you know, recoup, I, I don't know the word, it's how up they're pulling the, the data into their charts. So it is important to, as a trader, if you're going to be investing money, is to find your own private charting service. Okay. Now, it's important at all times to be a aware of what is going on in the markets. Okay, somebody says, do the charts on investing.com have a lag? Every free chart service has a lag. Okay. Even paid for services. What you want to find out is when you're paying for a service is how fast the feeds are. Okay. You know, Investing.com is giving to you as fast as they can for free charts. And it's how often they, re I, I don't know what the word is, there's a word for how often they they pull the data at refreshing. How often they're refreshing that number. Okay, because there's no straight data feeds. But there's there's charts from NetDania, there's charts from TradingView.com, there's charts from everywhere. Okay, there, there's just no way you just you have to decide. Okay, now in the case of the current market, 
in the case of this current market we're looking under, is the market was running sideways after the previous trend. And the highs are getting lower or higher, is the question you want to ask. Are the lows getting higher or lower? These are questions you always want to ask yourself. Lower and upper wick size, is there any sudden change? Okay. Candlestick bodies, is there any sudden change in cam in, in, and remarkable change in the body? So when you look at a chart, these could be the first questions you ask yourself before you're looking for patterns. Okay. Because these will help you notice the patterns. You know, in a downtrend, you would like to see just visually, because candlesticks are a visual clue, you would like like to see in your eyes, not on paper, not with drawing, is you would like to be able to see some commonality between price movement. The more commonality you can find, or the more visual thing, sometimes you can almost see a full trend line made up of tops and opens, or bottoms and lows, and you can see these numbers on the chart almost and visualize points on the chart. This tells you you have a nice solid uptrend or downtrend. But then you also want to start noticing, are the highs getting lower or higher? Where are the, the top of the top wicks? Are these wicks getting erratic and bouncing all the way up? Or are the lows doing the same thing? This is telling you who is having some dominance in the market. Okay. Now, do we also want to see if there's a sudden change? in the size of the bodies and the length of the wicks. Okay. These will start telling you something is about to happen, or it's going to tell you to look for a pattern. Look for one of these explanations. Okay. Now, if the market is not trending currently and is moving sideways, okay, the previous trend was a bearish one. You want to look at the previous trend, you need to always understand where you're coming from to where you're going. And then you can start interpreting where what you want to do or what you think should be happening. Okay. And these candles with their bodies. So like I see in the circle number one is a zone where even during the downtrend there were four consecutive green candles. See here in number one? However, even with four consecutive green the trend failed to reverse. The conclusion drawn here is that the bearish sentiment are outweighing the bullish sentiment. So what would happen is if you didn't know your patterns, you would take this and take a visual clue and you'd start saying to yourself, the trend is reversing. But it's not telling you that. And this is why you want to look for patterns, not just candle colors. Okay. Now the possibilities of downtrend continuation far outweigh the possibility of reversals. So when you see these things happening in a downtrend, okay, and you see things developing in there, remember the possibility of a downtrend continuation far outweigh the possibilities of a reversal. Reversals happen rarely, okay, so most likely the prices can go into some type of a consolidation and then continue down as downtrend. So true price reversals, when they occur, are very good things, but they don't occur that often. Okay. And a lot of times you can make honest mistakes. So it is sitting down to slowly interpret and understand what is going on in the market and look for it. And this is why when these patterns appear, not just the colors of the candles, they're pointing out something to you that is very important. So if we look at this little ongoing thing here, is Basically, everything here told you we were in a downtrend and moved to sideways consolidation, but we got no signal, no pattern that gave us an uptrend. We got a whole bunch of indecision of small bodies, and if we look, what happened was it came out and continued its downtrend. Okay, It was just a matter of time where the bulls and the bears were trying to figure out who had dominance. But this is important to know because if you would have sold out of that downtrend, at an earlier time, you would have lost all these extra pips you could have made. Now granted, getting out of the market with a profit is always a good thing. But when you sit back and say, look, I only made 50 pips, but if I would have read this chart right back, I could have made 150 pips. Well, this is a very important, crucial decision. Now, 
what we see here is as that price consolidation moved south, then we went into downtrend. Then we did get finally a reversal, but we got it in clear cut signals. So even though the possibilities of an upward breakout cannot be ignored, but the bearish side is equally as strong, especially considering the fact that this is a sideways movement taking place during a downtrend. It is better to avoid taking positions in a downtrend, but you need in a sideways consolidation. But you need to know when to get out of the market or when to stay in the market, and this is very important. So this comes from interpreting market sentiment, and each candle on a chart is the reflection of the market sentiment. Each candle on the chart may be saying something to you, and how do you listen to it? The answer to that lies in the size of the bodies of the candles and its wicks. Because if you notice there, we had lots of bodies and wicks, okay, but nothing showed you any decisiveness. Okay? And that's why we had that sideways pattern. Now, next week, we're going to take a look at this on real live charts. I've got three charts set up for you right now. We're going to take a real quick look at it, but we're just going to thumb through because it's on the Australian US dollar. And it's going to pop up your screen. I'm just waiting for it to pop up on your screen. Uh oh, there we go. And you can see here the Australian US dollar was moving in an uptrend. Okay, it peaked at the top of the uptrend. Okay, we saw these three candles peak out here. And we had a breakout move. And then we could set our targets. And our target one, our target two, our target three for their candles in a, to move in a downtrend. Now we're going to talk about these more precisely next week. But then we're going to go over here, and as you can see, this is what we would have seen at first. Let me go. Okay. And we saw the Harami. We saw the May close hanging man. And then we decided that this was telling us that the uptrend was over. Okay. So we started, we would have entered a downtrend. Uh, we would have entered a sell here with our stop loss here and because the market's bounced up and you know, we would have been stopped out of the market. Okay. But this is how we start using interpretations. And next week we're going to put these on charts, find the patterns in live moving charts. And we're also going to use these patterns to start calculating where we put our take loss, our state profit point, where our targets would be, and what we would do when these patterns developed to make trading decisions. And then we're also going to look at how you can use investing.com's new uh, candlestick pattern recognition software to stop spending lots of your time looking for these and you'll see them pop out. So thank you very much for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we'll see you next week for the balance of this class. And I do not know, uh, I'm assuming that at the end of the third class, investing.com will automatically send you the links to all three classes as well as the handouts because that's what we did last time we had it around. So thank you very much and I will talk to you again real soon. Have a good day now and thank you very much.